A mortar is an indirect fire weapon that fires explosive projectiles known as bombs at low velocities, short ranges, and high arcing ballistic trajectories. It is typically muzzle loading with short barrel, generally less than 15 times its caliber. History, origins, mortars have existed for hundreds of years, first seeing use in siege warfare. Many historians consider the first mortars to have been used at the 1453 siege of Constantinople by Fauci Sultan Mihamd. A European account of the 1456 siege of Belgrade by Giovanni da Tagliozzo credits the Ottoman Turks for using seven mortars that fired stone shots one Italian mile high. The speed of these was apparently slow enough that casualties could be avoided by posting observers that gave warning of their trajectories. Early mortars, such as the Pumhart von Steer, were also large and heavy, and could not be easily transported. Simply made, these weapons were no more than iron bowls reminiscent of the kitchen and apothecary mortars from where they drew their name. An early transportable mortar was invented by Baron Menno van Kuehen. An early use of these more mobile mortars as field weapons was by British forces in the suppression of the 1719 Jacobite Rising at the Battle of Glenshire. Wide-angle trajectory mortars held a great advantage over standard field guns in the rough terrain of the West Highlands in Scotland. Kuehorn type mortars of approximately 180 pounds weight were used by both sides during the American Civil War. At the Siege of Vicksburg, General U.S. Grant reported making such mortars by taking logs of the toughest wood that could be found, boring them out for 6 or 12 pound shells and binding them with strong iron bands. These answered as QL horns, and shells were successfully thrown from them into the trenches of the enemy. The mortar had fallen out of general use by the Napoleonic era and interest in the weapon was only revived at the beginning of the 20th century. During the Russo-Japanese War, Lieutenant General Leonid Gobiato of the Imperial Russian Army applied the principles of indirect fire from closed firing positions in the field and, with the collaboration of General Roman Kondratenko, he designed the first mortar that fired navy shells. The German army studied the siege of Port Arthur, where heavy artillery had been unable to destroy defensive structures like barbed wire and bunkers. The solution they developed was a short-barreled rifled muzzle-loading mortar called the Minenefer, and was built in three sizes. Recognizing the advantages of the Minenefer in trench warfare, production was stepped up and, by 1918, the numbers had increased dramatically to 1,234 heavy, 2,361 medium and 12,329 light Minenefer. Modern Portable Mortar It was not until the Stokes Trench Mortar devised by Sir Wilfred Stokes in 1915 during the First World War, that the modern mortar transportable by one person was born. In the conditions of trench warfare there was a great need for a versatile and easily portable weapon that could be manned by troops under cover in the trenches. Stokes's design was initially rejected in June 1915 because it was unable to use existing stocks of British mortar ammunition, and it took the intervention of David Lloyd George and Lieutenant Colonel J.C. Matheson of the Trench Warfare Supply Department to expedite manufacture of the Stokes mortar. The weapon proved to be extremely useful in the muddy trenches of the Western Front, as a mortar round could be aimed to fall directly into trenches, where artillery shells, due to their low angle of flight, could not possibly go. The Stokes mortar was a simple weapon, consisting of a smooth ball metal tube fixed to a base plate with a lightweight bipod mount. When a mortar bomb was dropped into the tube, an impact sensitive primer in the base of the bomb would make contact with a firing pin at the base of the tube and detonate, firing the bomb towards the target. It could fire as many as 25 bombs per minute and had a maximum range of 800 yards firing the original cylindrical unstabilized projectile. A modified version of the mortar, which fired a modern fin stabilized streamlined projectile and had a booster charge for longer range, was developed after World War I. This was in effect a new weapon. By World War II, it could fire as many as 30 bombs per minute and had a range of over 2,500 yards with some shell types. The French developed an improved version of the Stokes mortar as the brand Mle 27, further refined as the brand Mle 31. This design was widely copied with and without license. About 700 Stokes mortars were acquired by Poland between 1923 and 1926. 
These weapons were the prototype for all subsequent light mortar development around the world. Mortars today, while substantially similar in design to the Stokes mortar, are greatly improved versions. These offer a weapon that is light, adaptable, easy to operate, and yet possesses enough accuracy and firepower to provide the infantry with quality close fire support against soft and hard targets more quickly than any other means. Largest Mortars The largest mortars ever developed were the French Monster Mortar, Mallet's Mortar and the Little David. All three mortars had a caliber of 36 inches, but only the Monster Mortar saw action. Improvised mortars, improvised, or homemade, mortars have been used by insurgent groups, usually to attack fortified military installations or to terrorize civilians. The Provisional Irish Republican Army used some of the best-known examples during the 1970s, 1980s and 1990s. The largest types came to be known as barracks busters, and were usually constructed from heavy steel piping mounted on a steel frame. The largest had a caliber of 320 mm and fired homemade rounds carrying from 80 to 100 kg of explosive. As each tube fired only one round, mortars were usually deployed as a battery of four or six welded onto a steel frame. This was often concealed inside a van such as a Ford Transit. The vehicle would be parked, pointing roughly at the target. A timer fired the propellant charges after a delay a euro this allowed the mortar gunner time to escape. After firing, a timer-operated incendiary device could set the vehicle on fire in order to destroy any forensic evidence it contained. Well-known incidents using these weapons include the 1985 Newry mortar attack, when nine members of the Royal Ulster Constabulary were killed, and the Downing Street mortar attack in 1991. The IRA mortared 10 Downing Street as a cabinet meeting was in session. Three bombs were launched of which one detonated. It landed in the back garden of the British Prime Minister's residence and shattered the rear windows. Prime Minister John Major had to move to Admiralty House while repairs were effected. Function The mortar is a relatively simple and easy weapon to operate. A modern mortar consists of a tube into which assistant gunners drop a purpose-designed bomb. The tube is generally set at between 45 and 85 degrees angle to the ground, with the higher angle giving shorter firing distances. The bomb has a small baseline charge and no cartridge case. For extra range propellant rings are attached to the bomb's fins. When it reaches the base of the tube it hits a fixed firing pin, which detonates the baseline charge and fires the projectile. Some mortars have a moving firing pin, operated by a lanyard. Others may be fired by a trigger. These attributes contrast with the mortar's larger siblings, howitzers and field guns, that fire shells at higher velocities, longer ranges, flatter arcs, sometimes using direct fire. These weapons are also breech-loaded, while most mortars are muzzle-loaded. From the 17th to the early 20th century very heavy, relatively immobile siege mortars were used, of up to 1 meter caliber often made of cast iron and with outside barrel diameter many times that of the bore diameter. An early example was Roaring Meg used during the English Civil War. Smaller and more portable designs were introduced during the First World War, primarily for trench warfare, which took place at relatively close ranges. Mortars continue to be in use by militaries to the present day. Light and medium mortars are portable, and usually used by infantry units. The chief advantage a mortar section has over an artillery battery is the flexibility of small numbers, mobility and the ability to engage targets in cover with plunging fire. Mortars are able to fire from the protection of a trench or other type of cover. In these aspects, the mortar is an excellent infantry support weapon, as it can be transported over any terrain and is not burdened by the logistical support needed for artillery. Heavy mortars are typically between 120 and 300 mm caliber. These weapons are usually towed or vehicle mounted, sometimes breech loaded, and normally employed by infantry units attached to battalion through division level. Even at this size, mortars are simpler to operate and less expensive than comparable howitzers or field guns. A mortar can be carried by one or more people, or transported in a vehicle. An infantry mortar can usually also be mounted and fired from a mortar carrier, 
a purpose-built or modified armored vehicle with a large roof hatch. Heavy mortars can be mounted on a towed carriage, or permanently vehicle mounted as a self-propelled mortar. Twin-barreled self-loading mortars a Euro such as the Patria Amos.1 a Euro are the latest evolution of these heavy mortars and are mounted on platforms such as armored personal carriers, tank chassis, and coastal patrol boats. A mortar can also be a launcher for fireworks, a handheld or vehicle-mounted projector for smoke shells or flares, or a large grenade launcher. Design Most modern mortar systems consist of three main components, a barrel, a baseplate, and a bipod. Modern mortars normally range in caliber from 60M to 120M. However, mortars both larger and smaller than these specifications have been produced. An example of the smaller scale is the British 51mm light mortar which is carried by an individual and consists of only a tube and a base plate. Conversely, a large example is the Soviet 2S4M 1975 Tiolp and 240M self-propelled mortar. Smaller mortars are commonly used and transported by infantry-based mortar sections as a substitute for, or in addition to, artillery. Ammunition for mortars generally comes in two main varieties, fin-stabilized and spin-stabilized. The former have short fins on their posterior portion which control the path of the bomb in flight. Spin-stabilized mortar bombs rotate as they travel along and leave the mortar tube, which stabilizes them in much the same way as a rifle bullet. Both types of rounds can be either illumination, smoke, or high explosive. Spin-stabilized rounds may be fired from a smoothbore or a rifled barrel. Since mortars are generally muzzle-loaded, mortar bombs for rifled barrels have a pre-engraved band, called an obturator, that engages with the rifling of the barrel. They are more accurate, but slower to load. Exceptions to this were the US M2 4.2-inch mortar and M30 mortar, whose ammunition had a sub-caliber expandable ring that enlarges when fired. This allows the projectile to slide down the barrel freely, but grip the rifling when fired. The system is reminiscent of the Mini copyright ball for muzzle loading rifles. Mortars are made in a range of calibers. The French 81 on mortar became standard for many countries, while the Soviet bloc standardized on the 82mm mortar. Mortars suffer from instability when used on snow and soft ground, because the recoil pushes them into the ground or snow unevenly. A solution to this problem is the ration bag. Distinctive features of mortars. Modern mortars and their ammunition are generally much smaller and lighter than other artillery, such as guns and howitzers, which allows light and medium mortars to be considered light weapons. That is capable of transport by personnel without vehicle assistance. They are short-range weapons, and often more effective than other artillery for many purposes within their shorter range. In particular, due its high, parabolic trajectory with a near-vertical descent, the mortar can land bombs on nearby targets, including those behind obstacles or in fortifications, such as light vehicles behind hills or structures, or infantry in trenches or spider holes. This also makes it possible to launch attacks from positions lower than the target of the attack. Higher. A target easily accessible to a mortar. Mortars are also highly effective when used from concealed positions such as the natural escarpments on hillsides or from woods, especially if forward observers are being employed in strategic positions to direct fire. An arrangement where the mortar is in relatively close proximity both to its FO and its target, allowing for fire to be quickly and accurately delivered to lethal effect. Fin-stabilized mortar bombs do not have to withstand the rotational forces placed upon them by rifling or greater pressures and can therefore carry a higher payload and a thinner skin than rifled artillery ammunition. Due to the difference in available volume, a smooth bore mortar of a given diameter will have a greater explosive yield than a similarly sized artillery shell. For example, a 120mm mortar bomb has about the same explosive capability as a 155mm artillery shell. Also, fin-stabilized munitions fired from a smooth bore which do not rely upon the spin imparted by a rifled ball for greater accuracy, do not have the drawback of veering in the direction of the spin. Spigot mortar Spigot mortars, a particular type of mortar, consist of a mostly solid rod or spigot, 
under which a hollow tube in the projectile fits, inverting the normal tube mortar arrangement. At the top of the tube in the projectile, a cavity contains propellant such as cordite. There is usually a trigger mechanism built into the base of the spigot, with a long firing pin running up the length of the spigot activating a primer inside the projectile and firing the propellant charge. The advantage of a spigot mortar is that the firing unit is smaller and lighter than a conventional tube mortar of equivalent payload and range. It is also somewhat simpler to manufacture. Further, most spigot mortars have no barrel in the conventional sense, which means ammunition of almost any weight and diameter can be fired from the same mortar. The disadvantage is that while most mortar bombs have a streamlined shape towards the back that fits a spigot mortar application well, using that space for the spigot mortar tube takes volume and mass away from the payload of the projectile. If a soldier is carrying only a few projectiles, the projectile weight disadvantage is not significant. However, the weight of a large quantity of the heavier and more complex spigot projectiles offsets the weight saved due to the spigot mortar being lighter than a conventional mortar. A near-silent mortar can operate using the spigot principle. Each round has a close-fitting sliding plug in the tube that fits over the spigot. When the round is fired, the projectile is pushed off the spigot, but before the plug clears the spigot it is caught by a constriction at the base of the tube. This traps the gases from the propelling charge and hence the sound of the firing. After World War II the Belgium Fly K silent spigot water was accepted into French service as the TN8111. Spigot waters are generally out of favor in modern usage, replaced by small conventional mortars. Military applications of spigot waters include, the 290 m petard mortar used on the Churchill AVRE by Britain in World War II. The 320 mm Type 98 mortar used by Japan in World War II to some psychological effect in the battles of Iwo Jima and Okinawa, anti-tank launchers, the Blacker Bombard and PI-80 anti-tank launcher used by Britain in World War II utilized a spigot water type of launcher. Anti-submarine launchers, the Hedgehog launcher, used from the deck of a ship, used 24 spigot waters which fired a diamond pattern of anti-submarine projectiles into the sea ahead of the ship. A sinking projectile detonated if it struck a submarine and the pattern was such that any submarine partly in the landing zone of the projectiles would be struck one or more times. Non-military applications include the use of small-caliber spigot waters to launch lightweight, low-velocity foam dummy targets used for training retriever dogs for bird hunting. Extremely simple launchers use a separate small primer cap as the sole propellant. Images See also, List of heavy mortars, List of infantry mortars, Carcass, used in mortars before the modern age, military technology and equipment, chemical mortar battalions of the United States Army, Strix Mortar Round, Hedgehog World War II anti-submarine weapons, Barrack Buster, M2 4.2-inch mortar, 2S4 Tjolpen, mortar carrier, Livens projector, references, notes. External links, Field Manual 3-22.90, Mortars. Department of the Army. December 2007. Retrieved January 7, 2013. A Field Manual 3 22.91, Mortar Fire Direction Procedures. Department of the Army, July 17, 2008. Retrieved January 7, 2013. A Field Manual 23 91, Mortar Gunnery. Department of the Army, March 1, 2000. Retrieved January 7, 2013 a, Mallet's Mortar, the largest British mortar ever made. Defense Update, Modern Mobile 120mm Mortars, Defense Update, Advanced Mortar Munitions, Mortars During World War I, the Karl Morsa, WW2-era German 60 cm self-propelled mortar. Video